Can you maybe restate your Sure. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that the policy committee present revised policy 2.52 uh, as Colleen has presented to us uh, with our recommendation for a first reading and approval um, to the board at the next board meeting, the entire board at the next regular board meeting. I second that motion. Okay. All in favor? I guess we need to do a roll call vote. I don't know. What, what do we want to do for these? Let's roll call vote it. I think that makes sense. So it, it's okay to have to do a vote, <laughs> even though it's on as a discussion. Well, I think it's just because it's recommend. It's just a recommendation of this committee. I think it will be hard for us to, um, especially if there's a split decision. I want to be able to record. If somebody votes yes and somebody votes no, that we can present that to the into the whole board because I think that that will facilitate discussion and um, I think it's important to be able to record what this committee's recommendation is and make it as clear as possible. And I just think that'll be the easiest way to do that. Okay, Marcy. Yes. Tennessee. Yes. And then what I will do is. Um, I will take a shot at when we were in the last board meeting, we had the committee work discussion. Mm -hmm. And so I think it, this is a great opportunity to just use this to, I talked about mocking up a form and drafting a form for presenting the findings of this committee to the overall board. So why don't I take a shot at developing that form and we'll, this one will be pretty simple. Does that sound okay? Yes, and I, I want to say to you, Colleen, I appreciate that you like, came in advance and said that you were thinking about this and where it came from just because that kind of already took some information out of it for me. It wasn't like it just came to me. So one thing I, um, I'm, my motion is the same, you carried and everything. I was saying that I was looking at the numbers and I forgot it was so specific to the board member and that person because like moving forward, we have a, a 40 more graduates coming up. You know, there's a lot more people, but I forgot that it was specific to the board member and it wouldn't be all their family members because like I was telling me and there'd be like 320 more seats will be consumed at graduation in those bigger classes coming up mm. because the classes are so big that that won't impact us. So. Well, and it really will only be a board, a, a board member and I would assume they would be there anyway because it'll be their child that's graduating. Okay. That's really the circumstance here. So, all right. Um, okay. All right. That's done. So we will go um, to the overview of the board policy online platform. This is Angie Powell from the Illinois Association of School Boards. She's the Director of Policy Services, and appreciate you coming tonight. Thank you for having me. Yep. So Angie is here to give a demonstration of the IESB online platform. Um, I think I've had some just really brief conversations with some of you about kind of the cumbersome nature of how we currently post our board policies, their individual PDFs, and um, frankly it's just hard to use. It's not particularly easy to navigate. Um, it works, uh, but just thought that there is a, there's another option out there and um, Angie's here to demonstrate that and okay. back, answer questions. Great. So I might move, move, just so you know, because I can't see that very well, so I'm going to move over here and move on this, because I don't want to just pinch my head over. Right. No, actually, if you don't do that, maybe I can move back. Yeah, so, I just pulled up an to do. It's updated simultaneously after your 
adopted updates are um, finalized by IASB through the Press Plus service. So if you're familiar with Press Online, um, which you, have, you all have access to, um, it looks very similar, but over here, this instead of the press samples is would be your or adopted policies. So when you click on them, it would have your adoption date, um, your district name would be at the bottom of every policy. <coughs> um, with this service, it automatically adds crop of hyperlinks to all of your cross references and also hyperlinks to legal references. So when you click those, they go to the actual school code listing that it is referring to. So that can be helpful. Um, it's very, very searchable. So if you want to search in a hot topic, it will tell you, you know, each instance that it comes up and in, in which section too. So if you know you're looking for it as it pertains to employees, then you would go to section five. Or if you're looking to, for it, you know, as it pertains to students or the community, then you can easily find those instances. So you typed in cannabis and all, then all that came up? Yep. Yep. And then you can save favorites by clicking the heart, and then they would be in your favorites. If, if you wanted to, you know, even very quickly refer to certain policies, maybe a policy about school board operations, and you wanted to have that up during your meeting, you know. And that's, the, sorry, is that user specific then, or is that? Yes, that's user. Well, yeah, the favorites would be user specific saved on your the machine. There's, there's no login or password or anything though, so it would just be. So this is the back end for your school board members or school employees, not a user interface for parents. Uh, parents, yes, anybody, anybody. This would be on your public website. This mm -hmm. you would put this link on your public website, and it would be published for. So if a parent were to save yeah. it as a heart, that's saved for all parents, or is it user no, specific? Just, 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 there. just user specific. So is it a cookie based? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. And then people can download them as a PDF, or if you wanted to share it, then it just gives you a link that you can put in an email. Um, it's, you know, just gives you a direct link to that page that you can share. Um, so then for internal district use, there is a password that you can use that gives you, Additional internal features. Um, this is obviously not for the public to use, but it also gives you an archive tab. So you can see previous versions of policies. Um, this district has not been on the service for a very long time, so most of these don't have a lot of instances, but if, if they did have multiple instances, they would all be listed, and you can see previous versions with previous adoption dates of the policy, and that's just for the district's internal use. And then also with the password, you get a multi-district search. So if you had a topic that you wanted to see what are other districts doing, you could, oh, I didn't select all the districts. You could search that, and you could see what other districts have adopted that are that's more customized outside of our press sample policy language offerings. So that's another internal advantage. Um, so in subscribing to this, we would be giving permission for other districts to search our policies? Is that yes, right? yes. And your uh, policy manuals are just by default a public document, mm -hmm. so. No, I understand, I'm just, but as a, they'll have the ability to search our policy off of your site. Yep. That. Password login right here. Yep. Okay. What kind of questions can I answer for you? About um, this? What if we were going to add a policy um, of our own that didn't come through Press at all? How's what's our ability to do that? You already have the ability to do that through your Press Plus account. 
Um, so Dr. Hall and Mrs. Quinley have access to do that, and there, so there's a functionality where they can add that at any time. And then once that's published through the Press Plus service, it would automatically update your public site as well. Mm -hmm. Into the, the table of contents would automatically update. I'm sure that maybe I shouldn't speak for you, but you found some other websites more healthy when you did your or easier to navigate when you did information for schools, you know, homeschool kids. And I know I found some like, wow, this is really helpful. Let's click on this and click on this and keep makes it took so much longer. So, um, what's the what's the cost for this? Is oh, it's um, twenty five hundred dollars per year. Um, so as a Press Plus subscriber, adding and having and subscribing to both services, it would give you a two hundred and fifty dollars per year discount on your Press Plus subscription. So the Press Plus would go down by two hundred and fifty, and then it would add to twenty five hundred, and then that's prorated based on the month that you join for the remainder of the year. Okay, so for, do you have the number for us if we were to add this? What would the total cost for both services be? Sure. It's, Eighteen ninety five right now for Press Plus. Minus two fifty is sixteen forty five plus twenty five hundred. Forty one forty five. So uh, I can get I can give you guys some brochures that I brought with me too that list all of that. They will list a nine hundred and fifty dollar one time one time setup fee to set up your manual, but because you already subscribed to Press Plus, that's waived. How long has this service um, been something that you offer? Um, it has been offered, I know since before I started working at IASB, I want to say, I don't know the exact year, but I'm thinking the early 2000s. Okay. Um, do you, have, so you had, have you raised your rates for the use of this service? And we just have not. Okay. It's been the same for that long. Yeah, it's kind of weird, actually. <laughs> but no, the, the rate for this has not gone up. We, um, it is hosted by, um, see at the bottom it says powered by Microscribe, so it, it is not hosted by IASB, we just market it. Mm -hmm. um, and Microscribe has not raised our rates. And do you have a contract with them that yes. regulates the raising of the rates? We do, yes. Um, so I can say oh, for the next five years, it should be pretty stable. I wish our economy was as stable as that. Holy cow, that's pretty long time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anybody else in the audience have any questions? What percentage of school districts that subscribe to Press Plus or Press use this? Um, okay. Percentage, I would say. Or just the approximate number would be fine. I think we have. <clears throat> how many subscribers do we have? We have. 131 plus 46. 177. So 177. Um, districts subscribe to the school board policies online. You can also, at no additional charge, um, so included in the 2500, you can get a separate link for your administrative procedures manual, which you did just complete um, with IASB. We customized and aligned it with your board policy manual. So um, that link, of course, it should not be placed on your public website. But um, for your administrative procedures manual, you would get a separate link, and that one also has the password that gives you an archive for that, but there's also a public version, not uh, not for the public, but for, you know, staff, internal district staff um, that, that is not password protected, and you would have access to your entire administrative procedures manual as well, and that is included in the $2,500 to get the separate link. 
you have to commit to a certain time frame of using it? Like, what if you try it and you know, you can opt out? So if you, we started it and two months later we didn't want to, do you pay for the whole year or would we be yeah, pro rating or rating? Mm -hmm. um, so the administrative procedures manual, does that have a yearly subscription cost to it as well? It's included. So actually you get both links mm -hmm. for the $2,500. Okay. So but I know that we paid about $8,000 to have that manual. Um, that was for the development and customization and alignment of it with your policy manual. So that part is all complete and we've delivered that final product. And so now all the edits so that, and updates will be coming through a portal like this? Um, no, I'm just saying that you could publish the finished product okay. through this website and then all your administrators, you know, right. principals, that kind of thing could access right. it. Um, to do updates to it, when the press updates come out, we actually send those to Microscribe directly because we don't have a, a Press Plus service where we can do it like we do for the board policy manual mm -hmm. right now. Um, so we would actually email those directly to Microscribe and they update the website. It usually is very fast, but it'll, um, it can be even faster than the Press Plus updates. Um, so less than two weeks for sure. When, when you would update your administrative procedures to when they would be updated online, usually just a matter of a couple of days. Okay, and if we want to make specific updates to those procedural manuals mm -hmm. on our own, do we need to go through you? It doesn't sound like there's a portal to There's not a portal, update so you like just update did. those and then email them to us, and then we forward them to Microscribe. And then we'll let you know when they're, the updates are live. Do you have plans to, you may not know the answers, um, to create a portal for the procedures manual that would mimic this? Absolutely. They are very preliminary right now, so I can't tell you when that would be available, but we definitely would like to do that. And would you anticipate the same type of subscription model that we pay for Press Plus and um, kind of the fees that we see here would be? Yeah, it, Press Plus, the Press Plus fee includes press. Mm -hmm. So adding on a full maintenance for um, your administrative procedures manual would not be as much because the Press Plus fee is already including your access to all the samples, so we wouldn't need to double that. Mm -hmm. um, so it would be less, but we are working on that. Okay. Anybody have any other questions? I think I know that something will come to me as soon as you meet. <laughs> well, not. Andrew, I just want to clarify that you were showing earlier that when when districts do their own custom policies, mm -hmm. then those show up, and we're also able to see those. Yes. That, okay. So in your Press Plus account, which this is not a public site, this is your login mm -hmm. that just you and this is when we have, you would just click here to add it, and then you would, you know, put in your new policy, mm -hmm. save it, that sends it to IASB, we publish it into your table of contents, and when I, if you added the school board policies online, as soon as it hits your table of contents here, it would be live on your public website as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. And we always send you an email notification whenever those things happen. So we know it's done. How many school districts, so 177 are using school board policies online. How many give the data on how many use press and how many use press plus? I do. Um, 437 are using press plus right now, um, but we are sending out at least five to seven more contracts tomorrow, <laughs> um, and it is growing very rapidly. Probably but happened as a result of the IASB conference. <laughs> um, well, actually, issue 102 has <laughs> given sure. up the um, uh -huh. subscribers to that, too, because sure. people don't want to be doing it on their own through press. Sure. They want to do it with the full maintenance press plus, so um, I expect it to be growing by maybe another 40 districts in the next year. Right. Um, so that That's would take us, you know, let's say to 475. 
And then out of 800 and yeah, I was going to say 847, so I was close. 852, so it's it's around half and half. Right now, Press Plus is getting to be more than 50%. Um, but the remainder of the districts, except for maybe two, um, are all on Press. So two out of 852 don't use anything. Right. That's not a guaranteed number, that's my It's just super guess. low, is the it point, is right? Super <laughs> low. So it was a little higher, but we've, we've gotten some, several new ones adding press recently, so it's pretty low. So and just so that I understand, the press would be just access to policies that you put forward. The press plus is the uh, portal and the ability to edit Yes. All of those policies press, directly. Press, which is included in your Press Plus subscription, but you can subscribe to that alone. Um, you log in at IASB.com as a, as a district staff member or a board member. And then this is Press. It is access to the last four update issues and all of the sample material that we offer. These are the policy samples with all the footnote information. So um, then with Press Plus, we add the customized, the, the press update issues that come out, we customize them and add those onto your district's policies here at Press Plus. And we give you customized drafts of your board policies. So this is your issue one two. Um, so when you say customized, how is that? So anything that has been customized by your district through these footnote options, there's lots and lots of footnotes mm -hmm. on our samples. So what we've done is we've gone through those with you in a previous policy manual customization project. Mm -hmm. And then we maintain that customization. So if you've removed a paragraph and replaced it with an alternate paragraph from the footnotes, and that alternate paragraph from the footnotes is the one that changed in the press update, then that's the change you see in your draft update um, at, in your board packet. So any language that doesn't apply to your district because it just it's not part of how you operate has been removed, anything's been customized. Um, it, there's a very high level of customization <coughs> in Illinois policy manuals. Um, so that's all maintained and, and the appropriate changes are offered to you. Okay, and forgive me, I'm a new board member. When did we go through the exercise of customizing this and bringing it online? Um, I do not know, but I can check. Okay. Um, and then it's a little bit later. That would be great. I'd like to have that information. This is for a district with 3,200 students, $4,100 to keep our district in check with policy and law seems like an appropriate investment to do for the best interest of our students, for our community, for our teaching. I mean, keeping up with policy and law is a, that's why they have people that do that. That's a full-time job. That's a pretty inexpensive employee to have that information come in. You did your policy manual customization in 2008. And anything that we want to customize, um, I know this is probably the same question I already asked, but I just want to make sure I understand. We have the ability to log in here and make any changes, and if we want to adopt a different footnote than we did originally, we are in control of doing absolutely. that process oh, yes. right now. Absolutely, yep. And if we were to want to view the entire set of footnotes, <laughs> we do that through our press? <laughs> yep. You log in through IASB.com to your Press Online subscription, and you can see, see those here. And then we can just do a side-by-side -side comparison. Absolutely. So just an example of a customized policy for us, this is just a one I can think of, it is um, 5 240. It's about suspension of employees. And it's the um, 
Oh, we can pull it up. So, like this, this sentence here is custom language for us. Yes. So we, as part of the Press Plus service, anytime you have an update to your collective bargaining agreements, we review those and make sure that all your references are up to date and referencing to your collective bargaining agreement for any topics that are bargained. Um, that's included with the Press Plus service. So that there's no confusion or conflicts between your policies and your bargaining agreements. So we send you our bargaining agreements and mm -hmm. you do that? Yep. Mm -hmm. When we did the administrative procedures manual we sent collective bargaining agreements I can't think of what other documents but that was one that was requested student handbooks we, we make sure that there's no conflicts there also and all of that updating is just part of our subscription service there's no additional fees for that right right and then anytime there is a press update issue we email you as soon as you are if you don't care issue not to is available, um, and then you guys, as board members, see it like, just a second. You need more than a second. There it is. Like this. These updates from the press issue have been inserted onto your customized versions of the policy. And then you get these comments that give you the information that you need from the footnotes to be able to adopt the changes. And then sometimes the footnotes direct that there's a, there's a choice that the board needs to make. Mm -hmm. And so in those cases, there are questions and so you get the, the choices here on these PDF versions, and then the answers to those are entered in. It's a training right here at the well. site. But you know, as I said, board members don't need to log into the site or, or do anything here. It's just that's done in the superintendent's office. But then they would come in and, and enter the answer. And then IASB edits your policy based on the answer. And then going forward, next time there's an update to that policy, we're starting from that updated, customized version. So it keeps your manual customized and up to date ongoing. Okay, and you said we're notified. Do you mean that the administrators are notified or yes. that the, the school board members? The administrators receive an email when these when there's new updates available at the, at the Press Plus site. Okay, and um, is there a way to have, so we have this policy committee. Mm -hmm. I think it would be helpful to have the policy committee be notified, mm -hmm. notified as well. Is that something that happens or we just have to go and log in as board members and see that and then what do we see we only see the board members have um, automatic access to the press samples so you can see like if you click the october press issue over mm -hmm. here you see the changes to the samples but but we don't see our own you would see your own in your board packets so the your own the this pdf here that i pulled up should be in your board packets whenever you're considering issue 102 so this is showing you the changes to your policies. So whenever you have your first reading of mm -hmm. issue one or two, this is what you should be looking at. Okay, and so the highlight, can you explain to me what the highlight in mm -hmm. sections mean specific to our policies? Green is that we're suggesting new language, and then red would be that we are suggesting removal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Resolution. Um, so. And so if we were to have a certain footnote and each footnote had suggestions from you, you're only showing us the suggestions for the footnote that we have customized into our policy? Yes. And so just a point of information, um, when we had updates before, like that's kind of the regulation that our committee did, we would go over the green and the red and we decide as a committee what we recommended and kind of move forward from there. That's just, and that's mostly what we did. Just so, just so you know. Yeah, no, my question is, how do we know if the footnote might, we might have a better option with a different footnote? With the press if things comments, had changed. We put that information in the footnote in the Press Plus comments. Um, now, not 100%. So if you have told us, for example, that you do not own and control a Google soccer goal, which I don't know if you do or not, I can have a look. 
Um, so if you told us that you do own a control on movable soccer goal, we will automatically give you the update to that section. If you told us that you don't have one, we will not. So if you were to purchase one, mm -hmm. that would be something that you would want to go on to press online and get that sample language. Or let us know that you need that sample language and we can offer it to you. So we don't continually you know, re-ask the same questions, but we will ask any new questions that are written into the footnotes with a new press update. Uh, did you say remote control removable? What did no, you No, um, oh, if you own or control. <laughs> okay, thanks. I was thought you said remote control. I'm like, wow, I've pushed them a lot. They're heavy. Yeah, it's not a remote <laughs> So <control>. I gotcha. <laughs> so if we wanted to go through the exercise of, I mean, 2008 is a long time ago. If we wanted to go through the exercise of looking at the policies from a holistic standpoint and all the footnotes and talk about the question that we might not have known that we needed to update, we have a movable soccer goal. Um, <laughs> how does that happen? Um, you can do that process. Uh, it would be the same. You, you could do the same process over again. Um, we would start with our samples and we would you know, start with our updated samples and go through all of the questions. Um, it would be a process of anywhere from two to two to four meetings usually, mm -hmm. where we would come out and do that. Um, so that is usually a six to 10 month process mm -hmm. um, where we would do that and there is a contract fee for that that's based on your average daily attendance number. Um, so if you were to want to do that, we would suspend your Press Plus account, we would kind of pause that, do the update, and then we would refresh your Press Plus account with the newly adopted policy manual. Okay. Um, the, and has been redone. Do you know how much a service like that would cost? I do. Um, when you say it's, just, I'll let you answer the question first before I ask mine. It'll take me a second if you want to go ahead. Well, when you say it's suspended, like you'll keep us informed though of what the policy changes are, should there be something that would arise? I mean, well, we would, you know, as we would have a consultant come out and work with the board, um, and that consultant would keep you up to date as any changes came out. Normally, we hold all adoption of changes, though, till the end, and you just adopt your policy manual in its entirety. Sure. Unless there's something that is extremely urgent, like required with a new, you know, implementation date that's required by the school code or something like that, and then we'll let you know about those. <clears throat> I think I shared at one meeting that I teach a, a policy class and I wrote my syllabus in December, turned it in because it was due, and then all these thought changes went into effect in the last minute of the session, and it was not fun redoing my whole syllabus based upon legislative changes that happened at the 11th hour. And that's basically what the updating... That's why I'm an advocate of this service, because it was a lot of work to do. As soon as you update it, we've got another press update. Sure. Now, you know. Um, okay, so your this is the price structure. What was your average daily attendance? Okay. Is that about right? Twenty-eight thirty-one is what we have on record. Ooh, that's a little old. I think that would be not high enough. I'm not sure how many times and those are updated. Um, seventy-eight hundred thirty-nine. The, yeah, that would put you at the seventy-eight hundred. Now the idea of the Press Plus service is that you would not need to do that policy manual customization again. So another option would be, um, as you mentioned before, when the policy updates come out and we give you your customized 102s that over time you would compare those to the ones mm -hmm. on Press Online and, look, and take a look at the footnotes. And that is a process that we do recommend that folks do. Mm -hmm. But just having an annual review and monitoring calendar mm -hmm. where you are regularly comparing them to the press, you know, on some type of schedule. You could do it by this time we're gonna do all the issue one oh twos um, and compare those. Or and then you would know that you have looked at your policy manual every five years because we don't go in longer than five years without updating policies. They will all be at your press plus site within a five year span. Um, other districts might do it by, in February we do section two, in 
April, we do section three email and kind of walk through it that way on a regular schedule too. So there's different options of how you can do that and ensure that you are not missing any important changes. Okay. My understanding, Angie, that if we if we are doing the the five year updates, mm -hmm. that that's keeping us in. Yes. So if you are so not right, compliance, no, but it's no a monitoring tool. Review, yeah, there's no five-year review policies in issue 102, mm -hmm. but in some of the issues, there are there's another gray bar here that's a status of just five-year review, and that just means that there aren't any changes. We're not proposing any changes, but it's been five years, so we're asking you to, guys to review it, make sure you don't want to make any changes, and update your adoption date. That way, you're okay. At least every five years, your current board members who are seated around the table are are saying, "Yes, we agree with this policy on the state. This is this is correct for us." And so you sh you should not have policies in your manual that have dates older than five years. And then you said if we want to, we would need to compare it to whatever comes out just in press in the template form. To ensure that we didn't make changes that are no longer valid that we want to update. Mm -hmm. Yep, if there's a section from the sample that's missing from your customized version, you'd want to ask yourself, okay, why is this missing? Does this apply to us? Um, and typically, you know, for the most part, it's, it's going to still match up, but there are certain things that maybe, maybe do change in your district over time. on press 102? Advice on press 102. Um, don't be scared. <laughs> it's a little large. Um, I don't know, have you guys talked about whether you want to try and do it all at once or whether you prefer to break it up a little bit? Um, if, if you wanted to break it up, we can get you a priority list of things that are more urgent than others. So I can definitely forward you that. Would that, that would be yeah. that would awesome. be really helpful so because there are there are some impending deadlines. Yeah, when I watched the webinar on it, they said that there are about four or five mm -hmm. items that go into effect January first. Um, 
So when those mandates go into effect January 1st, what does that mean? Or how does that translate into, does our policy need to be effective January 1st? Or how does that work? Well, generally, it's just not possible. It's not actually possible for districts to get their policy adopted in time. So, I mean, there's no audit that's going to happen January 2nd or anything like that. It's basically understood that do it as fast as you can. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some districts do it with one reading. Um, when that's the case, that way you wait the second reading and you get it done a little bit faster. A second reading is never legally required. It's just a best practice. Mm -hmm. So when those things <coughs> are so urgent, that's one way to do it, to just do it, review it, adopt it in one meeting. Um, so, yeah. So when you say you could send us a list of priorities, I assume it would be based on adoption the timelines? Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. And then with the Press Plus service, there is um, always a, a deadline in your contract. You have 120 days from the last day of the month in which we give you the updates to respond. So just keep in mind that they do all, at least a majority of them, you're allowed to hold some, especially if you need extra review or you need to send any to your attorney, but a majority of them do need to be completed by March 30th. And what happens if that doesn't happen? Like what? There's a late fee. Mm -hmm. Late fee, okay. Yeah. That is, it just en enables us to continue to be able to provide the service in a timely manner to all 400 and some districts. Um, and then once the new, the next, you know, issue one three comes out, some of the policies might be involved issues and it can become very cumbersome and complex. It, so it just, it just helps everything move along better. So when you say that, that's us going in this back end mm -hmm. and adopting what we see fit and you said end of March is the March mm -hmm. Press 102, <coughs> There's up to 40 policies. I haven't okay. counted how many you guys got, but depending on customization, there's up to 40 here at your your press plus side waiting for you. It's large, issue 93 was larger, but it's the second largest we've ever had. All right. I can't think of anything else for you. I do not. Thank you. All right. Last chance for audience questions. <laughs> I'll post it. You can still see my family. <laughs> Can take this. And then I probably look at There you go. <coughs> okay, well, thank you. If we have questions, we'll just send them off to you. Oh, of um, the, as we talk about this as a whole board, there might be some that creep up. We didn't think to ask and don't have the interest to. I'm going to go ahead and forward you that priority list right now. That would be great. great. And when you forward that, do you forward it to the back end account, or how does that work? Yes, I generally uh, always send it to anyone who is, has a Press Plus username and password. Okay. So that, that's do it that Okay. Way. Can you forward that as soon as you can? Sure. That would be great. What do you see as next steps with this? Um, well, I think we need to probably have this as an agenda item mm -hmm. on the board meeting. I'm trying to. 16th. Got three. Although there are five of seven of us here, so I'm wondering if we're going to need another demo or not. I mean, that's. I guess I would have the board meeting happen and we can have a discussion and then ask the question if people feel like they need to see a demo. One thing we can do is um, we can go to districts websites that are using this and show some of the things that Angie showed. So maybe not, maybe not everything, but District 87 uses it, I know Morton uses it. Yeah. So, and some of the, I guess, main features of it would be able to to see. So I guess then after seeing that, if the board has more questions, we can figure out. Right. There's in our conference, I know when I went to the last meeting too, like in our Ohio conference, so either my team is more than I guess this has to also, for, for 
from my perspective, has to fall in line with um, our list of priorities because I do think that this is important. But um, you know, twenty five hundred dollars is also locking down two doors at the high school, and so in terms of how we prioritize our decision making, I think part of what we need to uh, get done is what's our list of priorities look like so that we have the big list as we spend dollars, we understand what the opportunity costs are. As my economics professor friend would say. Um, and, and so, you know, that would just be one of the questions I have is what's the opportunity cost of going with this and how does that stack to our list of other priorities? I just plug back in, I'm sorry to interrupt, but just to let you know, if you did want to show some examples, you can go to IASB.com and click on School Board Policies Online. <coughs> okay, great. And then click here to view local school board policies and policy manuals. This list is a little bit out of date. Bloomington's not on here, mm -hmm. but um, this does give a sampling of, of policy manuals that are published that way. Excellent. Okay. It's a nice picture. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, now do we have any anything else on the agenda? I'm just going to hand out some reading material. I was going to say, I think we have time to have some time right now. Just like those words. This is. Um, this is just a summary of Press 102. And there's a nice table. Most of it is a table that provides a summary of the policy and policy changes. So this is a good start, and then we can strategize about how to tackle it. It might be a little much for one meeting. Mm -hmm. So I think the priority list will be super helpful. Which you should have in your inbox. Could you send that PDF with all of the policies to us? Um, the PDF of... Remember when she clicked on that button and then it looked like red and green? I mean, because if it's that long, maybe we want to start reading it. Oh, early. You know what I mean? Like, Do you mean a press 102? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that way we... I know it's going to come to an agenda at one point, but probably going to be hundreds of pages long, right? So we can we send that up. Get start reading or we'll start reading early. Mm -hmm. Good. I think it's under 100 pages. Okay. If you if you get the full download from Press Online that includes all the administrative procedures and exhibits, that was almost 500 pages. But the policies, I think, are under 100. Say five. It, I thought oh, it was eighty. Yeah. Eighty-five. Yeah. Well, there was, too bad. No, it's not. It, it, actually, I after looking through it today, uh, I felt better. Good. Than, That's great. Because I. <laughs> Because, you know, there's these, like, oh, it's a ream of paper, it's 500 pages, but with all the, yeah. the related APs and exhibits, yeah. I can see where it would get long. But for yeah. the policies itself, it, it is under 100, and I, I can, I'll get it out, and we're winter break. <laughs> it seems like we could talk about scheduling our next policy committee meeting then because sure. we have an agenda and then like I brought some guidelines that I would like to go over at that meeting and we have press updates and that kind of stuff. And if you don't if we don't do it right now we can set a full but I think we could. Yeah, I'm fine trying to look at that. Is that okay? Say that again I'm well really scheduling our follow up I think that's committee meeting because we already have agenda items and we don't have to scheduling our next meeting. <laughs> thank you very much again yes, for coming so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Found Diet Coke from McDonald's. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I can think of, but again, thank you for your time. And I'll thank you. We'll let you know if we have any more questions. Um, absolutely. Please do. Thank no, you. Thank you. Pretty confident that we can go ahead and look at trying to schedule our next committee meeting, guidelines, press updates, perhaps new policy information that might come forward. So. When we want to do it. Um, do you want to try for next week? Because then we would have an opportunity to read through um, policies that Ken submitted 
uh, before the next board meeting. I won't be able to do it next week. I have to move my mom starting on Friday, which is moving, which will be a very big process, and I still have to work. I can, I could not do it next week. I could only do it that next week, the week of the 16th to the 20th. We have a, we have a board meeting already that night on the 16th. Well, if we're not going to um, get through, what, what are we, what's the goal of the next meeting? Because if it's to talk through this Press 102, I would like a little bit more time to actually do some reading. Me so too, I want to, it's I don't not, want to We're not going to be able to address Ken's policies, which I was hoping to do um, before the next board meeting so we could get a first reading there. Um, then I probably think we need to look after the new year. Okay, so I, feel like I could put this in our agenda for the meeting on the 16th as an actual board meeting and then that would allow us to have a guideline and information so that we could look at those in January with press and Ken's proposals and that. I mean there's nothing pressing on that. One was a June thing. The guideline will define maybe something else perhaps. I can't remember what the middle, what was the second one Ken? Sorry? You, you had three that you presented. There was an ambassador, there was one in the middle, the second one I can't remember, and then the tax levy. What was the second one? Oh, reporting. Yeah. Okay, public reports. And some of that might be covered in the board working agreement tonight, so. Does Monday, January 6th work? I'm having surgery that day. So, that's a no. Yeah. I'm available on Friday or Thursday after 12. I think I have no problems, which I'm not planning on having any, so. The night? Mm hmm January 9th? Oh, what time are we talking? I could be here at noon. I think we have some employees that want to that's be right. to come to these meetings. That's no, that's it. That is what they say. So I'm um, that night. I know is the Muhammad Seymour PTO meeting at Middletown that evening, and I did plan to go to that meeting. So I don't know what time that meeting is, but I would be available in the evening as long as it doesn't conflict with that. Well, the PTO meeting is at six. Okay. So can we meet at seven? Um, yeah, is that going to give you enough time, or do we need to see seven thirty? No, I'm committed to both places. I'm happy to be here. Okay. Sorry, I can't do that day. It's in the same place. That's nice. PTO meeting is here? Mm hmm. Oh. That's what they do. Would it be. Um, would it be okay if we did kind of attack press one and two with a, from just looking through kind of a lens of prioritizing? Mm -hmm. Yes, but she said she helped us. That yeah. was really nice that yeah. she I'll said forward that was there because there are there are some deadlines. I'm less I'm I'm less concerned about the laws that go into effect on January first because at the end of the day the law is going to supersede supersede policy. There is a resolution that the board has to pass by February 9th. That's probably one of the more pressing items. So. Well, I think now that we know that you don't have to have a second reading, then we can navigate this with a little bit more expedience on some of these issues. So if that's, if that's an optional thing, then I think we should take advantage of that, Agreed. especially when there are simply language changes mm -hmm. and there's no sense in belaboring this unless we need you know, data points or points of discussion. Um, seems we should expedite that whenever possible. Well, that gives us time because we have, if we do it that day, the ninth, the meeting is the 21st that month, correct? So yes, it was, uh, it's, yeah, <coughs> to meet the February one. What did you say? Deadline. Okay. It is a February 9th no. deadline. Okay. All right. Just, just an odd Sunday. Date. Mm -hmm. It's a wow. Sunday. Okay. It's, but that's what it is. It's okay. Okay. So January 9th at seven o'clock here. 
You can plug if you have enough boxes. You just have to make more meat too much. So, you know, so what's your intention with this guideline? So I put it together as a result of the good information that you provided at the last board meeting that I said, hey, remember we went over that and I said, I wish that would go before. Just having some guidelines for the committee as a whole. So, you know, for us to look at and talk about it in a committee and then move, you know, decide if this seems like an amicable working agreement document so that we can have some guidelines set. Okay, so but I just if we don't have a policy committee meeting between now and the next board meeting, do you want me to just interject yes. suggestions yes. here? Yes, and I will Can you send this to yes. me electronically? I just, I didn't have time to do it because I did it at school and then I forgot it. Okay. On my school time. It's on my desk, which is in my computer. And so your intention is to present this for discussion? Yes. On January 9th? Or? On the 16th. Oh, okay. So I guess we need to request that an agenda item of policy committee guidelines, guidelines be added. Can't do it on email, though. That's fine. No, I know. I'm just going to add to this document and send it, it. to Dawn. I actually, sure. I just want to see. Can I, I printed this and right. gave it to Don. I printed this and gave it to me. So I, what I will intend to do is, if you can send me an electronic copy, I will make comments here and I will just send it to Don as part of the packet. Yeah, I printed it with my four copies. I printed it for the people that are here and put on it the date, the draft, who was here, and that I passed it out. Maybe. But I didn't have the audience in that, but I don't have to. Some of this information came from attending ISB things and looking at other policies and stuff. So. All right, so wait, Megan, so let's go back. So we um, set our meeting for the night at 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. We already know that we're going to do press 102 with you. And by then, these guidelines can be looked at by other people. We're gonna we're gonna do the high priority press yeah. 102 stuff, right? Not the whole thing. Or do you wanna? I I just wanna be clear on what I need to have prepared. I mean, it's it's 40 policies. No, I was thinking the high priority. That's what I oh, was okay. thinking. Um, yeah. Without knowing how many high priorities. Um, are in there? her email, she there's said there's about six, I think. She's okay. Um. If we want to focus on going through those six on the ninth, that'd be great. I would love to get all of them, though, sent to me so that yeah. I can get ahead of it. I'll send all of them to the entire board. And can okay. And then I think, <laughs> I, I guess, since I haven't looked at them, I guess I'll reserve the right to, we can adjust the agenda if we feel like sure. we can get through yeah, more than no, six, then means. we'll just, prior to that agenda being released, target the ones we want to get through. Which, if we adopt anything in here, I, I provided some guidelines for release of information and getting things out so we have ourselves covered so that we don't put anybody can only put out. Okay. All right. Motion to adjourn. Sorry. They did. Yeah. Yes, I mean, and they found their car. So. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very good <laughs>